Is Ryzen ready for you, video editors, graphic designers, photographers, just creatives as a whole? In this video, we're going to look at the latest lineup of Ryzen processors, as well as what's coming down the pipe in the future with the announcement of Ryzen 4000 at CES 2020. I'm Benji Kaiser, and you're watching Don't Tech With Me. Don't Tech With Me is a show created to help creative professionals and everyday users understand tech better, specifically laptops and all the devices surrounding laptops. So if that sounds like you, definitely consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Like I said, in this video specifically, we are going to be talking about Ryzen processors. We're going to be looking at, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going... In this video specifically, we're going to be talking about the current offerings and what is to come from Ryzen in the near future. At the recording of this video, we are currently waiting for the release of Ryzen 4000 to the market. However, we've seen a bunch of the Ryzen 4000 processors like the Ryzen 4900HS make it into the hands of some creators across YouTube. But in this video, we're going to be talking about the current lineup, what it means, is it good enough for creative professionals and what that all looks like. Make sure you hang on till the end of this video because we are going to be looking at a lot of different recommendations in relation to the processors that are currently on the market. So if you're a creative professional and you've been wanting to get into Ryzen, which laptop would be right for you? I'm going to have a whole list and a lineup of processors that you can choose from in order to make sure you're making the correct buying decision for your use cases. Also, another thing to mention is we're going to be coming out, or excuse me, I'm going to be coming out with a full video comparing all of the Intel and a Ryzen processor. So keep an eye out for that video coming on the channel in the future. And if it's ready, you can find that in YouTube card. And if it's ready, you can find that in YouTube cards above or the description below. But let's dive in right now to this video. The first thing we want to look at is the current lineup of Ryzen processors. So Ryzen 3 is everyday tasks, browsing, and long battery life. That's basically their entry-level processor. So maybe if you're you know, working on Word documents a lot, you're browsing the web, you're a student, so on and so forth. Ryzen 5 is more for business, design, so graphic design, maybe in Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, InDesign, so on and so forth, uh, and then also some light video editing and photo editing. And then we have Ryzen 7, which is for workflow, heavy design tasks, basic 3D animation, plus some moderate to advanced video editing. So the Ryzen 5 processor, we're looking at 1080p, maybe a little bit of 4K. With the Ryzen 7, we're looking at more 1080p for sure, getting into some 4K video editing. And then we go into the Ryzen 9 processor series, which currently, as of right now, is not available in a laptop format, but they're promising the highest level of performance, 6K video editing, advanced 3D animation, and more. But we'll get into that more when we start talking about the latest release of the Ryzen 9 4900HS processor. All right. So that's the current lineup of Ryzen processors as we see it on the market. Um, these processors, Ryzen in general, really started off as the base price point. Um, they got into laptops from gaming. So when Ryzen was first introduced to the market, I, I, we saw a lot of focus on gaming. Um, so the reason being for that is gaming computers are a little bit easier to test out parts, customize PCs. Gamers are a little more interested in building their own PCs and stuff like that. So Ryzen had a really clean introduction into the market with gaming. When they moved into their laptop category in 2017, we saw them really go after the budget sector. So we saw a lot of Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, and Ryzen 7 processors, but they didn't have quite the power that we just saw promised in the slide before, talking about you know basic video editing, advanced video editing, and then like extreme 6K video editing. So when Ryzen was introduced, you're looking at around a $400 to $800 budget category, and they really owned that category very well. They gave good performance within that category. All right, let's go on over and look at some of the processor lineups here. All right, so as you see, we have the Ryzen 3 3200U, the Ryzen 5 3500U, Ryzen 7 3700U, 3550H, 3780U, and the 3750H. So 
just a quick walkthrough. The U processor is their ultra low power. What that means, it has low power consumption. It's going to be good for basic design tasks. It's going to be good for daily workflow, like working in Microsoft Word or browsing the web. That's going to be these two processors here. Then you're going to move up to, say, the Ryzen 7 3700U, and you're going to get a little bit better, well, actually quite a bit better performance for design, and you're, start to get, you're going to start to be able to really get into video editing with this processor here. Then these processors are their latest processors, so these are going to be better for 1080p and some 4K video editing, but not a ton. All right, so now let's look at the latest introduction and what's on the horizon from Ryzen. The Ryzen 4000 series is their Zen 2 architecture. It's gonna have up to eight cores and 16 threads, whereas Ryzen 3 had up to four cores and eight threads on the Ryzen 3000U. Enhanced RX Vega GPU and up to eight Vega CUs. Uh, and they're also, you're going to see a little bit less power consumption out of these newer processors, which we are hoping to see improved battery life. And as you'll see later in the video, that's actually coming true for the first product release, which is fantastic. All right, and this is the lineup that they're promising. So we have the 4800U, the 4700U, the 4600U, the 4500U, and the 4300U. I find this numbering a little confusing because back you know when they first released their processors it was pretty basic pretty straightforward so they've added a few models but it's nothing outrageous like intel this is this is really something we can handle and as you see here we have eight core 16 threads on their biggest u mobile processor um, and so basically this is going to be what you'll find in most ultra books you're going to see some of the h processors in the gaming laptops or you're going to see them in some of the more high-performance video editing laptops to come. Um, but this is going to be your basic mobile setup. Then we get into the H processors. And these are, like I said, the high-performance gaming and creative laptops. Um, so these are going to be more the higher-end budgets. But as we're seeing with the product release, it's not as expensive as we anticipated. And we'll get into that in just a minute. So here on the H series processors, you have the 47, excuse me, the 4800H and the 4600H. So, and these also, as you see, consume a lot more power. So we might see some dips in battery life, but hopefully with some of the optimization, it's not going to be dipping too much. All right, this is what I wanted to get to here. This is the Microsoft Surface Laptop 3, and it features the Ryzen 7 3700U, 3780U, and the i7 1065G7. So this laptop is really interesting because it gives you the opportunity to purchase Ryzen versus Intel, and they're very closely matched. However, we're seeing still more, slightly more performance out of the latest Intel 10th gen processor. But you gotta remember that Ryzen is competing on this laptop here with an older iteration, so they haven't introduced the Ryzen 4000 series yet. So we could see some performance increases as Ryzen starts releasing those 4000 series laptops. So one thing to consider is, should I buy a laptop right now? Well, we're going to get into the differences and how this plays out in just a minute. And we're going to answer that question. All right. One thing that I really want to mention to you, and let me jump over here to my slides because I want to pull this up real quick. This is something that is going to be very valuable to you. All right. Let's pull this over here. Sorry, this is taking me a minute. We're going to exit out of there and pull this over. All right, so this is something I've been working on for the past, I would say the past month, two months, and it's something that I think is going to be insanely valuable for you guys. So this is a Google Sheet that I've built, and it has every processor currently available on the market and where it ranks to each processor. Now, let's explain. So here we have processors for basic graphic designing and photo editing. And then here I have an example laptop that goes along with it. So these are also set in different budget categories here in the laptop list. So you can jump over to the laptop list and you can see I've listed out the estimated price. So the price that's found possibly on Google, excuse me, not Google, Amazon or Best Buy. And so you see you can go through and pick a laptop that fits your budget, fits your needs. So entry level, to low level budget, medium budget, high-end budget, 
premium laptop, so on and so forth. So it's a whole lineup of laptops. And then you can go check out the processors in ascending order of power. So this list really gives you the opportunity to understand for the first time where processors rank. The numbering can be so confusing. And so I created this in order to help you navigate all the confusion of processor numbering, labeling, lettering, so on and so forth. Okay, I just wanted to throw that out there really quickly um, because I think that's an incredible resource and you'll be able to find that in the description below of this video. All right, let's jump back into the slides here and we'll keep moving forward uh, through this video. All right, so Ryzen is hot on the tail of Intel. That is one thing that we're really seeing more and more each year upon year. And I'm gonna kind of walk you through a little bit of an example of how this is playing out. So from 2010 to 2020, I've owned three specific MacBook Pros. Each of those have had different i7 processors along the way. Okay, so <clears throat> what I really wanna look at here, and I'm gonna drop back over here, is AMD's versus Ryzen for their performance increases. So my first MacBook Pro in 2010 had an i7M620. Okay, my second MacBook Pro in 2015 had an i7-7700HQ processor. Okay, between those two processors, we saw a 108% increase in performance. So that's like the average benchmark performance between those two processors in five years. Okay, now when we move on to the latest 2020 16-inch MacBook Pro versus the 2015 MacBook Pro, you have a 28% increase in power. So literally one-fourth the increase in a five-year increment compared to the five-year increment previously. So you see what, what's happening here? Intel is not performing at the level in the product development that they were originally performing at years ago. So what we're seeing is Intel is slacking off and Ryzen is boosting their performance. All right. So let's jump into the Ryzen comparison. All right, so Ryzen, on the other hand, launched their Ryzen 2700U processor for laptops in 2017, okay? In 2018, Ryzen launched the 3700U with a 13% increase in power. In 2019, they launched their 3780U with a 10% increase in power. So immediately, we see a 23% increase in power versus the 28% increase in power in three years. In, okay, so let me restate that. We saw a 23% increase in power in three years versus Intel's 28% increase in power in five years. So what that shows is that Ryzen is competitively and aggressively increasing their power comparatively to Intel, which means we are gonna be seeing really good things not only this year, in the launch of these new 4000 series processors, but in years to come. So we're still kind of getting to the point of, should you upgrade to Ryzen now or should you wait? You know, what are we looking at? And really what it comes down to is looking at what they are doing in their current lineup. So one thing that I've noticed Ryzen promising is exponential growth in their processors this year. But when we put that to the test, we don't necessarily see that. All right, so this is Handbrake, and the next slide will be DaVinci Resolve. And as you see in this DaVinci Resolve slide, and I talked about this in my last video, we're seeing that the i7-9750H processor, which is Intel's basically peak premium processor for creative professionals, is still outperforming the latest Ryzen 9 4900 HS, which is supposed to be their highest performing processor available in laptops as of this date, and it's getting beat by the i7-9750H by almost a full minute on an export time. Go to Premiere Pro, and they've changed the clip that they've exported, but we, this is the data we have. The i7-9750H is beating the Ryzen processor by a full nine minutes almost. So what that's telling me is currently, as of right now, you'd be better off getting a i7-9750H in perhaps a Predator Helios 300 and that laptop would run you about $1,000 or 
or less currently as the new models continue to come out versus Ryzen's latest processor. Now, I'm not saying that this year they're not going to release more processors that are going to blow our minds and give even better performance. Now, the reason Intel is beating Ryzen in this in this Premiere Pro export is because of something called QuickSync. Basically, it's something Intel developed through uh, a relationship with Premiere Pro to get faster export times on the Adobe software and just run more efficiently. Okay, back to is Ryzen right for creative professionals? What I will say is that if you're a graphic designer or you're a video editor who's working in 1080p in some 4K video editing, then I think Ryzen is actually a really great buy if you're on a budget because they are fitting more in the budget category than say perhaps Intel is. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through a list of laptops per a budget category and talk about these laptops and how they will work. All right, so let's jump in here right now. So the first laptops that I wanna take a look at are the graphic designers and photographers on a budget. So this is the Asus VivoBook 15. This has a Ryzen 3 3200U processor. And this laptop would be really good for running one graphic design program at a time. Now you're gonna say, why would I do that? What if I wanna run Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign at the same time? Well, you could, but the problem is your laptop's gonna substantially slow down and it might be a frustrating workflow. So this first laptop here, you're gonna to wanna to run, run one program at a time. My English is struggling today. Acer Aspire 5, the Ryzen 5 3500U. This one, you could probably run two graphic design programs at the same time, um, but still, you know, you're going to want to take it light. It's not the most powerful laptop in their lineup, but for the price, it's a fantastic laptop. And I'm going to link these laptops up in the description below. So if you want to go ahead and check those out, get some more in-depth specs, you can definitely do that. But if you do make a purchase through that laptop, uh, purchase through that link of that laptop, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you guys. And I always appreciate when you all use those links because that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. The Asus Vivo Book with the Ryzen 5 3500U, again, two design programs, maybe some music and some web browsing, and same with the Lenovo IdeaPad S430. This is actually one of my favorite laptops in the lineup, is that Lenovo. Next would be video editors on a budget. So these are gonna be great for like 1080p and maybe a little bit of light 4K video editing. HP Pavilion, the Asus Tough, and the Lenovo Flex 14. And lastly, video editors on a budget once again, but getting a little bit more power. This is gonna give you a little bit more aggressive 4K video editing, but I would not, you know, say that this is going to be the best choice for 4K video editing. Um, that I think we're going to see in the new Ryzen 4000 series processors. But these are still fantastic laptops. Uh, the Microsoft Surface 3, the Asus Tough, the MSI Alpha 15, and the HP NVX. So if you're ready to pull the trigger on one of these laptops, I honestly think they're a solid buy. I think Ryzen's continuing to develop more and more of their abilities to serve creative professionals. Like I said, they started in the gaming sector, um, but as they've moved towards laptops, they've continued to improve year over year. So I think there's going to be really great things coming mid to end of this year. Um, but for now, we just seen the latest release of the 4900 HS inside of the Ryzen, inside of the Asus Zephyrus G14. So that's this laptop here, and we saw a great review from Hardware Canucks um, on this laptop. Um, so really what I found with this laptop is it gave the ability to have a budget high-performance chip inside of a really well-built laptop. Um, I was seeing really good battery life, it ran really cool, and the performance was Pretty, pretty competitive with Intel's highest performing chip. But like you saw in those benchmarks, it was not blowing it away as Ryzen or AMD had promised. So though they promised big, so far they haven't fully delivered on that promise, which to me, I think that's okay. Um, but at the same time, when you're saying, hey, we're gonna blow away Intel, we're gonna crush the competition, um, and they showed some slides that really, you know, they were proving that, but so far it hasn't come to be true. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Don't Tech With Me. Again, this is where you're going to find the latest tech news and explainer videos of the latest tech in the industry. If you have more questions and I didn't explain certain aspects really well or you know, you're still missing, okay, I don't understand what that quite meant, definitely comment below. This is a place where I want to interact more and more and this is a place where I'm just enjoying 
really putting videos out on more of a conversational basis. I'm Benji Kaiser, and this is Don't Tech With Me, and I'll see you on the next episode.